What's up, you? In this video, we're gonna talk about eight ways to make money as a software developer. There are going to be some obvious tips, some not so obvious ninja shit tips, and then a little bonus tip at the end for you guys that I think you're actually really gonna enjoy, so make sure you stick around for that. With that said, let's jump right into it. Please help me beat the YouTube algorithm. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel because this channel is all about helping you become more successful as a developer and taking your income to the next level. And with that said, let's jump right into it. I do wanna mention that if you wanna take your freelancing skills to the next level, I have a masterclass. It's in the link below. I'm not gonna talk much more about it, but it's pretty awesome. Go check it out. Let's continue. I saw this video by Forrest Knight and I was inspired and I was like, okay, let me talk about this as well. There are lots of different ways you can actually make an income as a developer and I feel like some of them are not as obvious to every single person and not every single person knows about them. So in this video, I'm going to share with you all of the ones that I figured out and did a lot of these personally and then which ones are the best you decide and then you go for them. So let's get started and get into it. So number one, obviously getting a developer job, <laughs> okay? So if you get a job as a software developer, you can be making an income. That's the most obvious. Let's go to number two. You can freelance as a developer. So what does that mean? You can actually get, say, a local client to pay you, okay? so. Freelancing is broken down into many different ways because it depends how you actually get the client, okay? So for two, we'll say local clients. You can go to clients and you could go to meetup.com and meet people there. This way, it's easy for the people to get to know you, like you, and trust you because they see you face to face. So you actually have much more of a chance to be able to land a client that you meet locally. Number three, you could do jobs on Upwork.com. Now, here's the trick with Upwork.com. If you type in and you are looking at jobs, so say you go to the job section on Upwork and you type in JavaScript, okay? and you are looking at different jobs that exist there. If you look at things that say expert developer and you need to be able to do something with data science or machine learning or you need to be able to do stuff with a pot sheet or something, you're probably not gonna be able to do it, okay? It's gonna be a little bit too complex. You gotta know your level. If you're a beginner and you're intermediate, you wanna look for maybe not a job that'll pay you $15,000. You maybe wanna look at a job that'll pay you $5,000 that's maybe building an online store. It requires intermediate skill level, and guess what? It's gonna only take you a few months of experience to be able to build something like that. So the I, you have to have the I for what kind of project you can do. If you're even more beginner than that, well then don't do the thing that requires you three months of experience. Do the thing that pays you $300 that's most likely gonna be an entry level thing. Maybe they want you to write a little piece of code that can do something with CSV files or it tracks something on Amazon, but those are all fairly simple things that you could actually be able to do with a few weeks of, you know, once you're past like the very basics of coding, you should be able to actually do this even if you're a beginner. On Upwork, you gotta have an eye, but Upwork.com is a great way to actually make money as a software developer. Number four, tutoring. Now, this is a thing that most people don't actually talk about and I think it's so fundamentally important and I don't know why people don't talk about this a lot, but I think it's a huge and a very important way to make an income as a developer, especially a lot of you that are actually learning, especially a lot of college students and computer science students, I think this is so important for you guys, and not just for you guys, but like personally for me and even my close friends, we have been able to make over 70, $80,000 a year just from teaching coding to other people. And before I even began and started doing freelancing, I was teaching coding. And the biggest reason is because in those days, I myself was a beginner. And so if I'm a beginner, I am still able to teach somebody who has zero experience. If you have two months of experience and you know if statements and you can write a while loop and a for loop and you can do very basic problems, 
Well, somebody who has zero experience in coding and they don't even know how to write print hello world, they're gonna relate with you really well. They're gonna be happy to work with you because you're not that professor with five years experience or 20 years of experience who when like who they can't resonate with you know we all have that professor that we can't resonate with and we're like who the hell we don't want to be around this guy and so you want to make sure that they want to make sure that they work with you because it's easier for them to relate with you you were in their shoes just a few months ago so you're actually gonna be better instructor for them and you can be charging 35 to 50 dollars or more even 75 dollars an hour teaching them if you completely suck and you're a complete beginner of course you can't be charging them 50 dollars an hour if you can't do anything and you have terrible social skills and terrible speaking skills of course it's not going to happen right but if you have decent social skills and decent communication skills and you have empathy and you care and you want to help somebody you can help the other person and you can be charging 35 to 50 dollars an hour if not more so i'm gonna now break it down into different uh, places you can actually apply so number four i'm gonna say wise ant so you can go on wise ant and apply on wise ant to tutor people number five you can actually go to takelessons.com and apply. Oh, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Wiseant or Take Lessons. Those are the two platforms I used to use and my close friends used to use to be able to make an income. Number six, I wanna give this resource to you guys, people per hour. So there are a lot of people who are not in the United States when it comes to tutoring, you might actually not be able to do it you know, on Wiseant or Take Lessons because those, I believe, are primarily for United States. So you might want to look into something called People Per Hour and, you know, Google also, you can Google the equivalent of a tutoring resource in your own country. And People Per Hour is a good tutoring resource. Number seven, Code Mentor. Now, if you have any amount of experience in coding, especially if you're more advanced, this is not a beginner friendly platform. So if you're a beginner, do not look at codementor.io. But if you have, like if you're good or you're advanced, I mean, this is your platform. This is a highly, it's so curated it, and it's so amazing for freelance developers who wanna be able to help people. And what I found on Code Mentors is the clients are also really incredibly skilled people and really amazing people in general. So you're not working with like little kids or people who have no idea about coding like you might be working with on Wiseant or Take Lessons or People Per Hour. But on Code Mentor, you're working with also really amazing people. And so this is a great platform if you're skilled as a developer and you can actually be making probably one of the, probably the most amount of money uh, when it comes to teaching on Code Mentor, there are a lot of developers I know that are actually making six figures on Code Mentor and absolutely killing it and have a great lifestyle. So I would look into Code Mentor. Number eight, YouTube. Now this is a bonus one, but I want to mention this because there's every developer under the sun is doing something with coding and on YouTube. First of all, of course, there's me. I'm a developer and I'm on YouTube. And then you have Joshua Fluke, and then you have Corey Schaefer, and then you have Chris Hawk, and then you have John Sonmez, and then you have Tech Lead, and you got Joma Tech. I mean, oh my Lord, the list goes on. The point is, they all figured out the trick, which is become a developer and make videos. So did I. It works. There is a huge niche for developers online and everybody and their freaking mother, when they make a video on a day in the life as a software engineer, it gets views. I made one, it got views. And everybody else in the world makes one. I just recently saw a day in the life of a software engineer and it's like parentheses, New York, you know, one month ago and it has like hundreds of thousands of views, you know? I know uh, this kid, Chris Jeriza made 
or Chris Harris, I don't know how to say his name. He made that and then he got on the map. And like, I know Forest Knight has made something on this. And like, literally everybody, including me, has made something on, on these types of titles and it just gets a ton of views. And you could be making uh, a decent amount of income from just YouTube ad revenue, especially if you're getting lots of views. I mean, somebody like Tech Lead, I mean, this guy's probably getting what, like 100, like 50,000? Is it safe to say 50,000 a month? Right? 25,000, 20, let's say, let's say 25,000, you know, to $50,000 a month just from ads on YouTube. But then he's also selling his own courses, right? I am selling my own products. For anybody who's interested in my products, they go to my website and they go buy my product. For anybody that's interested in Tech Leads product, they go to his website, they buy his damn product. The same thing with like Joma Tech or whoever else, right? Like it's a similar pattern. Joshua Fluke, he has his own products and he sells them. And you know, Coding Dojo has his product. Like everybody has figured it out. And at this point, it's not even like a guess. It's not even a, is it actually gonna work out for you? I don't know who has failed. Like take my friend Tenzin. He has a channel on What's Dev and he's doing really well with it. Everybody has a chance, at least for now. I don't know, like once maybe it gets too saturated, but like as of now, it seems like it's fair game for every single person. So uh, there you have it. Eight ways to make money as a software developer. That's it. If you like this video, hit that like button so we can beat the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is it. This is Kazi. I love your face and I'll see you in the next video.